I mean, as much as I'd love to say that I made a home here in Buffalo, Buffalo made a home for me. I mean, the reason that I'm able to pursue my passion and my dream here um, is really just because of the opportunities that I've been afforded by the region. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, whenever you may be listening, and welcome to Latitude, the 43 North podcast. I'm your host, Nate Benson, Director of Media and Public Relations here at 43 North, and we've got a great episode of the podcast this week. I'm joined this week by Dan Buckmaster. Dan, how are you? I'm good. Thanks for having me on. I got your name right, right? You That's got always it right. the first thing you got to be a careful of. A lot of people don't, but yeah, you got it right. Perfect. Uh, Dan, uh, UB student currently, right? Yep. Uh, returning for my master's degree. Master's. Oh, you overachiever. I'm mm-hmm. just kidding. We love, <laughs> we love master's students. So, Dan, why are you here today? I'm here to kind of introduce myself and talk a little bit about the company that I started. That's what's great about this podcast. It's not just for established startups or investors or founders. It's for uh, aspiring startup founders. And uh, Dan's here to talk about Tresco. Yep. What's Tresco? So Tresca Design is a company Tresca, I started sorry. about a year Tresco ago. Tresco is, is like a gasoline company, right? <laughs> yep. Yeah. So Tresca Design is a company I started about a year ago. Um, and what we do is mechanical design, product development, prototyping, and then we also do a little bit of 3D printing. What's your background? Why Are you, are you uh, an experienced engineer or are you just winging it? <laughs> I don't like to say that I just wing it, but uh, <laughs> I'm a mechanical engineer by trade. Okay. I got my undergrad in mechanical and aerospace engineering from UB. Um, and I kind of used that background while I was still an undergrad to start to get into the space and start to you know, get into product development and mechanical design and see where I could find my niche. So why on earth would you start a startup uh, firm uh, right out of college while also working on your master's? Are you absolutely insane? Uh, yes, absolutely. Perfect. Um, you know, it, it really, it was the event or the result rather of me spending a couple years trying to figure out what I wanted to do. Um, When I came to school for engineering, I was kind of under the impression that, you know, I'm going to go to school, get my degree, get hired out of college, have that company pay for my master's, and then retire 40 years later from the same company. Mm -hmm. Um, And as I started to begin my career path at UB, I found that that really wasn't what I wanted to do. Um, after my sophomore year, I got an internship at a larger defense contractor, and I really enjoyed the work I did. Uh, I worked on some really, really cool things, especially for a the 19-year-old to be working on. Sure. But I saw the the development of the engineers there and basically where my career path was going, and I just really wasn't enjoying the environment and where I wanted to go. I thought that I could do something a little more interesting, that I could have a little bit of a bigger impact. Um, So I started to kind of explore around Buffalo. Um, I'm not originally from the area. I was born and raised in New Jersey. I just came here for college. And I started to really delve into this startup space. And that's where I started to get a, a better vision of where my career path could go. So, you know, the kind of age old uh, narrative about Buffalo is, you know, people left Buffalo for college, left here, left Buffalo for jobs and never came back. And it's kind of the reverse for you. You're not from here. You came here for school and decided because of what was it developments you've seen in the startup space that, oh, there might be more opportunity here. Yeah. I mean, as much as I'd love to say that I made a home here in Buffalo, Buffalo made a home for me. I mean, the reason that I'm able to pursue my passion and my dream here. Um, is really just because of the opportunities that I've been afforded by the region. Um, A large part of that has come from the Western New York Prosperity Fellowship. Mm. Uh, They were kind of the bridge between me sitting in Amherst at UB North Campus and my classes and kind of getting a look at what's happening in the city, what's happening downtown, and specifically to me, the tech startup community. So what was the process for getting started like? Uh, The process for getting started was trial and error and a few accidental things that just came to be. Um, While I was in the middle of my internship with that defense contractor, um, I had a friend working at a startup, 3AM Innovations, Mm -hmm. and he saw the work I was doing and he said, hey, you know, we might be able to use your help here. And I ended up spending just under a year with that startup. And that really gave me, because I was working that job at the same time as I was in the corporation, it kind of gave me the black and white of, okay, here's what you're doing right now. This is what you could be doing. What do you like better? Mm -hmm. And that answer was clear. Um, And during my time at 3AM Innovations, which by the way is a 
fantastic startup. I'm sure you're well yeah, familiar with 43 North. finalists this year in the 40th North competition. Yeah, and I wish them the best of luck. Um, you know, I learned a lot about product development. I was kind of thrown right into the mix. It was a small team at the time. Um, and I used that to kind of build a network here. And once I had that network, I started to reach out to people and see if the work that I was doing at 3 a.m. I could do at other places. Um, and, you know, 3 a.m. was a big step for me to get there. And sometimes I almost wonder if I left too early because, I mean, that was a great place to be. But it kind of gave me the confidence I needed to go out and try to just do this on my own and see if I could. What's the uh, kind of the support mechanisms been like for, you know, a UB student like yourself uh, to create a startup? I know there's a lot of programs within UB. Did you utilize any of those? Uh, what was that process like? Yes. Yeah, so, um even from the beginning when I was just tinkering with the idea of how to basically start a consulting firm, I leveraged Blackstone Launchpad at UB, which is UB's basically in-house entrepreneurship center for students. Um, I worked with the program director, Hadar Borden, who's also the director of the Prosperity Fellowship. Mm -hmm. And she kind of helped me form the vision of how I could start this company. And she eventually got me connected with the UB Foundation Incubator in Baird Research Park, which is where my office is currently located. Mm -hmm. Um, to get me involved with that program, see if I would be a good fit. And that was really the biggest stepping stone I've had so far into making this just go from a side job to, you know, my company and, you know, the mm -hmm. growing the roots of my company. So why, let's say I've got a startup needs nacho stand. Why would I hire Tresca? Um, again, I focus on mechanical design and product development, and part of what I think makes me unique is that I do have a background in electronics, where I wouldn't call myself an electronics designer, but I do have connections in industry. I do work very closely with Aero Electronics to basically have enough of an understanding of the electronics where when you come to me with your product, I can give you a good sense of how difficult it's going to be and how we can achieve integrating those mechanics and those electronics together, whether it's motors, whether it's um, different types of sensors and sensing systems. Uh, there's a lot that comes into play, and part of that expertise has allowed me to get into the manufacturing space and specifically manufacturing automation. Who have some of the clients been that you've worked with? I, you know, I know you mentioned uh, 3AM 3 Innovations. Uh, who else locally? Uh, yeah, so 3AM is where I got my start. After them, I worked um, a little bit with Encore Golf. And one of my first startup companies that I kind of just cold called and eventually got into was Rachel's Remedies. Oh, okay. And that was the first time where I got a little bit of an inkling that I may be able to do this and grow and make this work. What was so enticing about kind of this, you know, engineer for hire, so to speak, you know, uh, running gunner, uh, you know, not sticking your roots into, you know, one company, but kind of floating about? Why, why is that enticing for you? Um, I think, well, first off, it keeps me interesting. I love the fact that when I come to work, I can start the day working on a hairdryer and end the day working on a sports product or mm -hmm. on a freeze drying mechanism. Um, but Really what it's allowed me to do is kind of push my business in different directions and into different markets. So I can work with manufacturing companies. I can work with startups. Um, it's allowed me to kind of explore where my home will be. I mean, I'm a young business. If I were to sit down and tell you that I know exactly where it's going, I'd be lying. Mm -hmm. um, so allowing myself to kind of go forward and explore where I can market myself, where I can bring my skills has been big and part of what has given me a little bit of an edge is that I allow myself to show my passion to prospective clients. Um, most of the people that have worked with me know that I care about what I do and I enjoy doing what I do. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when I go to work, I really truly enjoy doing the work because I feel that it's my work and it's what I'm good at and it's what I really like doing. You're a young man. Uh, you know, we're not going to saying the ages here but fairly i'm fairly certain you're a 90s kid um <laughs> and this is me speaking as an 80s guy um but being so young you know any any uh entrepreneur faces you know uh, i won't say discrimination but kind of like raised eyebrows when you go into a, a large uh, maybe established startup or established you know company saying hey i'm available 
you know, to, you know, overhaul your products or help you with your engineering concerns or problems. Um, have you run into anything like that? Um, has, has, you know, fresh experience been uh, a burden at all, or is it something people are welcome? Uh, yeah, I mean, there's a little bit of a mix of both. I mean, the first reaction people get when they meet me is, wow, you're not the typical engineer that sits across a room trying to sell me their services. You're I pleasant. Mean, that's, that's helpful. Most engineers I know are grumpy. <laughs> I uh, I was taught how to talk by my family. Sure, and there I, you go. <laughs> I kept that trait. Yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, it, it definitely is a challenge, and it's one that I overcome by, again, just showing my passion, uh, showing my past work, you know, bringing my portfolio to people, kind of winning over their trust and their respect. Um, and it's something that will get easier over time. But again, I also see it as an advantage as, you know, there are advantages to being as young as I am rather than being mm. someone that had a job for 40 years and is now doing that on the side. Um, one of the blaringly obvious ones is cost. Sure. You know, I'm able to work frankly for cheaper than a lot of your traditional consultants um, while still delivering exceptional value to any client that I have. So it's definitely a balancing act between, well, do you know, I don't want to come across as an intern, but I'm also not, you know, a 65 year old engineer sure. sitting across <laughs> from you. Right. So it's, uh, it has been a balancing act and it's something that I still try to figure out day to day, but I have been able to get clients and we have been growing and expanding and part of looking forward is okay. I'm going to start building a team. The goal here isn't Dan, the engineering consultant. The goal is Tresca Design becoming a brand, becoming well-known, especially in the Buffalo area. So as I build a team, how do I add to my competencies? How do I grow my expertise? How did you come up with Tresca? It's, a, it's Fresca with a T. but It's Fresca with a T. That's the easiest way to remember to spell it. How, how, what was the journey to Tresca? What's it mean for you, your company? So Tresca kind of is a little bit of a callback to my undergrad in engineering. Um, when I was looking for a name for the company, I wanted something that was easy to remember, easy to spell. And I basically wanted to have a name that meant something to me. And in some ways, you know, talked about the work that I did. So the way I did that was I cracked open all the old engineering notebooks, knocked the dust off of them. And I just started looking at engineering words, theories. Mm -hmm. And what I came across was Tresca. And it's named after a French mechanical engineer, Henri Tresca, who basically invented the field It'd of... Be Henri. Henri. Henri, yes. <laughs> so For our French listeners, I apologize. Of course. So he basically invented the field of plasticity. And what plasticity is, in very simple terms, is how materials deform and interact with each other. And I work a lot in that field, especially in simulations. Mm -hmm. So when you have a product... If it's a chair, people are going to be sitting on it. How do you know it's not going to break? So that's a lot of the analysis that I do, and I use his theories quite frequently. And another little tidbit in there that not many people realize is in my logo, there's a little bit of a crooked H shape. That's actually a cross-section he invented for the meter bar, which mm. was a standard that was created in the 1800s to officially say this is what the meter is. And he invented this cross-section that was geometrically the stiffest it could possibly be. Hmm. So I uh, have a little a attribute to him there. there. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I'm always fascinated by the, or, the origin stories of, 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 of startups. So uh, I can certainly appreciate, you know, what went into, into that. Um, you know, kind of looking ahead, you've got obviously a long future ahead of you, but what is, what does success look like uh, for you in the short term and long term? Success for me looks like a bunch of successful projects and a happy team. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as much as I would love to say that my focus is entirely on making sure that I make all my clients happy and making sure that my company is making money, a big part of it for me is building a team locally that is special and kind of a community. I mean, I want people that join my team to be as passionate as I am. And I want their work to be fulfilling to them. I want to grow people with the business. Um, and I think I will be able to present opportunities to engineers and younger college students 
to work with a company that will really grow their career and whether they spend it here or not, mm -hmm. I want to be able to offer them an experience kind of like I had with 3AM where I was allowed to be creative and go ahead and market myself and really figure out what I was good at and what I wanted to do for my career. Who are some of your mentors locally? I have mentors all around this area sure. and it's tough to pick out a couple. Um, but through UB, I'm exposed to mentors at the incubator network, such as Tom Murdoch, Tom Albrick, um, Hadar Borden is a great mentor to me at Blackstone Launchpad and through the prosperity fellowship. Um, and really I leverage my core mentors to kind of point me in the direction of people to meet. I mean, I love meeting with any person, any random person, just grabbing coffee or lunch with them and just hearing their story, whether they're in my field or not hearing how their career went, hearing how their business got started, where it may have failed or succeeded. And I think everyone has a little bit of input on my business. And if I vary where the input comes from, I ultimately just get better feedback. I mean, I'm an engineer, I look at data. So if I can get 20 people from 20 different fields to tell me about my business, I have a better picture of where I can go, some things I can look out for, common mistakes, that I could be making and how I can improve myself and ultimately grow faster and stronger. Since you mentioned his name, I, I'd be a terrible host if I didn't plug. Head on over to our archive of Lads Who the Fourth and North podcast and listen to the episode with Tom Murdoch from the Western New York Incubator Network. Uh, Win is a fantastic resource for startups, not only in Buffalo, but across Western New York and the eight counties of Western New York. There are actually your incubators all across the region, you know, Dunkirk, Batavia, Lockport. Um, all of those incubators can help with your startup idea. So go listen to the interview with Tom and give, uh, give Tom a ring one day, head on over to their website and, uh, talk to Tom about your startup. Um, all right. So as we wrap things up, uh, what's the project you've worked on since starting your, your firm? Um, you know, and I know you're not going to say a favorite because nobody ever likes <laughs> to publicly say their Of course favorites. not. But what's the project you've been most proud of and why? I mean, that's a tough question. That's, um, why, that's why I asked it. <laughs> of course. I asked the tough questions here. I knew that getting into this. Yeah. Um, well, I would say that one of my favorite projects has been my project with Rachel's Remedies. Yeah. And because Another the... Another former 40th North finalist. Yep. Because the product hasn't been released yet, I can't really speak to the details of what I did with them. But again, that was my first client that I kind of cold called and sure. tried to get into. I remember actually sitting here and dig at a startup grind event when Rachel Jackson was presenting. And this was when I hadn't even filed for the company yet. I was just thinking about different ways that I could start a company to do what I want to do for a career. And at the end of her interview, she said, you know, we're looking for ways that we can, you know, grow our brand and build new products. And we're looking to the future. And I took that as a token of, okay, let me, let me see if I can, you know, make something work here. And I went up to her right after and I introduced myself and I told her, Hey, I want to follow my passion. I want to build something and I want to be a part of what you're doing. And she was really receptive to the idea of us working together. She gave me her business card right away. And I think for the next six months, I emailed her about once a month and she would always get back to me, but there was always that disconnect because they're extremely busy over there. Mm -hmm. And finally, you know, about half a year later, I got an email saying, hey, let's meet at 43 North next week. And go. from there, I was able to kind of, you know, learn a little bit more about their business and what they're doing and help them develop their next product, which will hopefully be a big success for them. Uh, so what are the types of companies you're looking to work with? I can really work with a wide spectrum of companies and some individuals that aren't even companies. So I can work with startups and give them assistance on mechanical design and product development. Um, even rapid prototyping and 3D printing is something that I can offer just as a, a quick service to startup companies. Um, I'll also work with larger, more established manufacturing companies that basically just need some outside expertise mm -hmm. or simply some spillover work as a mechanical engineer. I mean, unfortunately, there's not well, fortunately for me, there's <laughs> not a lot of large companies that just offer temporary engineers. Yeah. And that's a little bit of a market niche I can have where if you're just overloaded, which if you speak with any engineering department at any company, they're overloaded on work. Sure. I can kind of come in and integrate with your team and work with you to get something done. 
Um, and then the last part I would say are just individual inventors, people that have ideas that either want to develop them or want to know what it's going to take to develop them um, from the mechanical point of view or from the overall point of view. Um, and when I speak with a client, if there are things that aren't within my expertise, I have a large enough network, especially in the area where I can refer them to different um, collaborators in the area. I mean, the one of my largest collaborators right now is Product Logic by Mary Constantino. And she, her name is a buzzword in and of itself that I think almost everyone in this region knows her name. Um, and I've found ways to work really well together with her because she is an expert in industrial design and product design. So I'm able to bring my mechanical expertise to her and leverage her industrial right. skills right. as well. All right. Now's the time. How can people get a hold of you if they want to chat, have a coffee, learn more about you or possibly hire you? Yeah, you can reach out to me uh, really anywhere on social media at Tresca Design, T-R-E-S-C-A Design. It's like Fresca with a T. I love it. It's the best and, tagline uh, ever. Yeah, and TrescaDesign.com um, outlines some of my services and ways to get in touch with me. And, you know, one thing I'd like to say is that I'm open to listening to your product, hearing about your ideas, or just talking about ways we may be able to collaborate. I never turn down a meeting for coffee or lunch with anyone. All right, Dan, thank you so much for swinging by the podcast. And hey, quick house cleaning item. Make sure you head on over to iTunes or Apple Podcasts. Leave a five-star review of this podcast and all of our podcasts. Shoot a little bit of a review. And hey, you never know. We might reach out to you and send you a 43 North t-shirt. And hey, if you want to let uh, me know who you want on this podcast, shoot me an email, podcast at 43north.org. We're always looking for great ideas, great guests. Dan, any guests you would like to have on the podcast? You can think I'm putting you on the spot here. Oh, boy. I could send you a list. Okay, send me a list. What's that email address? Dan at TrescaDesign.com. No, you, you're send, you, you, <laughs> Are we send talking me, about my email? Send me the podcast. It was at podcast of 43 northorg <laughs> You know, it's a long morning. Yeah, it is. Morning. Haven't had enough caffeine. All right, thank you so much for listening. For, for, ugh, wow, I may have to edit this out. I don't know. Maybe I'll keep it. You know what? Mistakes. We talk about failure in the startup world. I have failed at this close, but I'm going to keep it in. Ditto. Uh, thank you so much for listening. For 43 North, I'm Nate Benson, and we'll see you at the next one. <laughs>